20 Questions is a spoken parlor game which encourages deductive reasoning and creativity. It originated in the United States and was played widely in the 19th century. It escalated in popularity during the late 1940s when it became the format for a successful weekly radio quiz program. In the traditional game, one player is chosen to be the answerer. That person chooses a subject but does not reveal this to the others. All other players are questioners. They each take turns asking a question which can be answered with a simple yes or no. In variants of the game, multiple state answers may be included such as the answer may be. The answerer answers each question in turn. Sample questions could be, is it bigger than a bread box? Or can I put it in my mouth? Lying is not allowed in the game. If a questioner guesses the correct answer, that questioner wins and becomes the answerer for the next round. If 20 questions are asked without a correct guess, then the answerer has stumped the questioners and gets to be the answerer for another round. Careful selection of questions can greatly improve the odds of the questioner winning the game. For example, a question such as does it involve technology for communications, entertainment or work? can allow the questioner to cover a broad range of areas using a single question that can be answered with a simple yes or no. If the answerer responds with yes, the questioner can use the next question to narrow down the answer. If the answerer responds with no, the questioner has successfully eliminated a number of possibilities for the answer. Popular variants, the most popular variant is called animal, vegetable, mineral. This is taken from the Linnaean taxonomy of the natural world. In this version, the answerer tells the questioners at the start of the game whether the subject belongs to the animal, vegetable or mineral kingdom. These categories can produce odd technicalities, such as a wooden table being classified as a vegetable, or a belt being both animal and mineral. Though if made of cloth or plant fibers, a belt can also be considered a vegetable. Other versions specify that the item to be guessed should be in a given category, such as actions, occupations, famous people, etc. In Hungary, a similar game is named after Simon Bar Kokhba. A version of 20 questions called Yes or No is played as a parlor game by characters of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Similar to the aforementioned, there is another version known to English as a second language educators that is played based on a given topic. There are many different ways to play this language game. 20 questions on educate, school, learn, for example, was developed for the Austrian Federal Ministry of Education and Women's Affairs. Computers, scientific method and situation puzzles, the abstract mathematical version of the game where some answers may be wrong is sometimes called Ulam's game or the RA copyright Nilla Euro Ulam game. The game suggests that the information required to identify an arbitrary object is at most 20 bits. The game is often used as an example when teaching people about information theory. Mathematically, if each question is structured to eliminate half the objects, 20 questions will allow the questioner to distinguish between 220 or 1,048,576 objects. Accordingly, the most effective strategy for 20 questions is to ask questions that will split the field of remaining possibilities roughly in half each time. The process is analogous to a binary search algorithm in computer science or successive approximation ADC in analog to digital signal conversion. In 1901 Charles Sanders Park discussed factors in the economy of research that govern the selection of a hypothesis for trial a euro cheapness, intrinsic value, and relation to other projects. He discussed the potential of 20 questions to single one subject out from among 220 and, pointing to skillful caution, said. Thus 20 skillful hypotheses will ascertain what 200,000 stupid ones might fail to do. The secret of the business lies in the caution which breaks a hypothesis up into its smallest logical components, and only risks one of them at a time. He elaborated on how, if that principle had been followed in the investigation of light, its investigators would have saved themselves from half a century of work. Note that testing the smallest logical components of a hypothesis one at a time does not mean asking about, say. 1,048,576 objects one at a time. 
instead it means extracting aspects of a guess or hypothesis, and asking, for example, did an animal do this? Before asking did a horse do this? That aspect of scientific method resembles also a situation puzzle in facing a puzzling scenario at the start. Both games involve asking yes-no questions, but 20 questions places a greater premium on efficiency of questioning. A limit on their likeness to the scientific process of trying hypotheses is that a hypothesis, because of its scope, can be harder to test for truth than to test for falsity or vice versa. Radio In the 1940s the game became a popular radio panel quiz show, 20 questions, first broadcast at 8 p.m., Saturday, February 2, 1946, on the mutual broadcasting system from New York's Lonica Theatre on West 48th Street. Radio listeners sent in subjects for the panelists to guess in 20 questions. Winston Churchill's cigar was the subject most frequently submitted. On the early shows, listeners who stumped the panel won a lifetime subscription to pageant. From 1946 to 1951, the program was sponsored by Ronson Lighters. Indiana, 1952-53, Wild Oat Cream Oil was the sponsor. The show was the creation of Fred Van Deventer, who was born December 5, 1903 in Tipton, Indiana, and died December 2, 1971. Van Deventer was a W.O. radio newscaster with New York's highest-rated news show, Van Deventer and the News. Van Deventer was on the program's panel with his wife, Florence Van Deventer, who used her maiden name, appearing on the show as Florence Rinnard. Their 14-year-old son, Robert Van Deventer and the program's producer, Herb Polsey, completed the regular panel with daughter Nancy Van Deventer joining the group on occasions. Celebrity guests sometimes contribute to identifying the subject at hand. The Van Deventer family had played the game for years at their home, long before they brought the game to radio, and they were so expert at it that they could often nail the answer after only six or seven questions. On one memorable show, McGuire succeeded in giving the correct answer without asking a single question. The studio audience was shown the answer in advance and McGuire based his answer on the audience's reaction. During the 1940s, New York radio studio audiences included many Brooklynites, and they cheered wildly whenever Brooklyn was mentioned in any context. The moderator was sportscaster Bill Slater who opened each session by giving the clue as animal, vegetable, or mineral. He then answered each query from panel members. This cast remained largely intact throughout the decade-long run of the show. Slater was succeeded at the beginning of 1953 by J. Jackson, who remained through the final broadcast, and there were two changes in the panel's juvenile chair. When McGuire graduated from high school, his decision to attend the North Carolina-based Duke University meant he could no longer remain on the program, so he asked his high school friend Johnny McPhee to replace him. Since McPhee was attending nearby Princeton University, he was thus geographically available for the production in New York. McPhee continued until he graduated and was himself succeeded by Dick Harrison in September 1953. Harrison continued until early 1954, when he was replaced by Bobby McGuire, then 22 years old. McGuire appeared as the oldest living teenager until the end of the run. Television As a television series, 20 Questions debuted as a local show in New York on WOR-TV Channel 9 on November 2, 1949. Beginning on November 26, the series went nationwide on NBC until December 24, after which it remained dormant until March 17, 1950 when it was picked up by ABC until June 29, 1951. Its longest and most well-known run, however, is the one on the Dumont Television Network from July 6, 1951 to May 30, 1954. During this time, original host Bill Slater was replaced by J. Jackson. After this run ended, ABC picked up the series once again from July 6, 1954 to May 3, 1955. The last radio show had been broadcast on March 27, 1954. In 1975, Producer Ron Greenberg made a pilot for a revival on ABC with host Jack Clark, which did not sell. The pilot featured four celebrities, actress Kelly Garrett, 
movie critic Jean Shillett, comedian Anne Miara, and actor Tony Roberts, along with two contestants who competed against each other. In 1989, another revival pilot was made for syndication by Buena Vista Television. This version, hosted by Dick Wilson and featuring Marky Post and Fred Willard, also did not sell. Equals recordings of episodes equals, like many game shows of the era, 20 Questions was a victim of wiping. Most recordings of it were destroyed. A Dumont episode from January 18, 1952, and the 1975 pilot still circulate among collectors. As of August 2013, both can be seen on YouTube. It is unknown how many radio episodes survive. Equals versions outside the U.S. Equals, 20 questions also appeared in several other countries. United Kingdom, the BBC aired a version on radio from February 28, 1947 to 1976 with TV specials airing in 1947 and 1948 plus a series from 1956 to 1957. On radio, the subject to be guessed was revealed to the audience by a mystery voice. Hackforth became well known amongst the British public as much for his aloofness as his apparent knowledgeability. The series was originally presented by Stuart McPherson. The panel comprised Richard Dimblibby, Jack Train, and owner Wynne and Joy Adamson, in later years comedian Peter Glaze also. A later presenter, Gilbert Harding, was ousted in 1960 by producer Ian Masita when, after having drunk a triple gin and tonic he had originally offered to Masita, he proceeded to completely ruin the night's game a euro he insulted two panelists failed to recognize a correct identification after seven questions, and ended the show three minutes early by saying I'm fed up with this idiotic game. I'm going home. He was replaced by Kenneth Horn until 1967, followed by David Franklin from 1970 to 1972. A revival ran for one season in the 1990s on BBC Radio 4, hosted by Jeremy Beadle. A version with a rival lineup produced by commercial station Radio Luxembourg, is not acknowledged by the BBC. Another revival, under the title Guess What?, was hosted by Barry Took for a single series in 1998. A televised version ran from 1960 to 1961, produced by Associated Rediffusion for ITV and hosted by Peter Jones. The mystery voice later became a running gag on the radio series I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. The BBC World Service also broadcast a version called Animal, Vegetable and Mineral, chaired by Terry Wagon with a panel including Michael Flanders. Canada, 20 Questions aired on CTV in 1961. Its host, Stuart McPherson, went on to become the original host of the UK version. Ireland, a bilingual version of 20 Questions aired on RTE Radio 1 in the 1960s and 70s. It was hosted by Gira Cube de Tigune, written by Dick O'Donovan and produced by Bill O'Donovan and included Dominic O'Euro unregistered trademark Reardon, Tony Adale, Sienna Mercher and Maya no one on the panel. It proved enormously popular, travelling the length and breadth of Ireland, hosted in local clubs and community halls. Photo of the quiz team. Featured article in the RTE Guide November 1, 1968. An eight-minute bilingual extract of a 1971 broadcast can be heard here. Norway, NRK aired its own version continuously from 1947 to the early 1980s. In 2004, the radio series was revived and regained its popularity, leading to a 2006 TV version. The Norwegian 20 Spa SMANL continues on NRK radio and TV, and a web-based game is available at the official NRK website. A 2006 board game based on the series is currently the prize sent to listeners who beat the panel. Hungary, in Hungary, the game is known as Barkakba, named after Simon Bar Kokhba, the leader of the second century Jewish uprising against the Romans. The story goes that the Romans cut out a spy's tongue, so when he reached Bar Kokhba's camp, he was only able to nod or shake his head to answer Bar Kokhba's questions. The number of questions is not limited to 20. Barkakba was staged as a television game show Kaikjada Maikjada. 
on the Hungarian national television Magyar Televizia Cubed from 1975 to 1991. It was the first show presented by Istvan Varga Cubed, who would later host the Hungarian versions of Jeopardy! and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? See also, 20 Q Artificial Intelligence, Guess Who? Board Game, List of Programs Broadcast by the Dumont Television Network, List of Surviving Dumont Television Network Broadcasts, 1950-51 United States Network Television Schedule, 1951-52 United States Network Television Schedule, 1952-53 United States Network Television Schedule. 1953-54 United States Network Television Schedule, 1954-55 United States Network Television Schedule, Situation Puzzle, Akinator, an online version which uses artificial intelligence. References, David Weinstein, The Forgotten Network, Dumont and the Birth of American Television ISBN 1-59213-245-6, Alex McNeil, Total Television, 4th edition ISBN 0-14-024916-8, Tim Brooks and L. Marsh, The Complete Directory to Primetime Network TV Shows, 3rd edition ISBN 0-345-31864-1, David Schwartz, Steve Ryan and Frederick Wasbrock, The Encyclopedia of TV Game Shows, 3rd edition ISBN. 0. 8160-3847-3. Equals notes equals. External links. 20 Questions Online Game, Dumont Historical Website, 20 Questions at the Internet Movie Database, The Glowing Dial, 20 Questions, 20 Questions at Internet Archive, The 1989 20 Questions Pilot Page at the Game Show Pilot Light, Tactics of 20 Questions Rules and Tactics. 20 questions play the game online, another 20 questions online game.